Warning. The content in this video essay contains graphic descriptions of extreme mental illness, self-harm, and blood and gore. If you are sensitive to any of the topics above, discretion is advised. Silencer, Natram. Two names etched into the stone of metal history forever. Two names that might be familiar to you, but how much of the story do you actually know? How is it that a singular demo and only one studio release that released 20 years ago can not only still have an impact on numerous artists to this day, but be involved with one of the most gruesome, horrifying, morbid, and downright unsettling stories ever told within not simply black metal, but metal as a whole? Within black metal, there's a genre known as DSBM, an acronym that stands for Depressing Suicidal Black Metal. This genre puts a heavy emphasis on emotionally evocative, oftentimes morbid lyrics and imagery that is intentionally dejected and grim. The project in question finds itself around that lane. The year is 1995 in Stockholm, Sweden. Andreas Casado begins Silencer, and sometime between the formation and the release of the debut demo, Nathram, rumored to be Mikkel Nilsson, after playing in a variety of unknown projects in the extreme black metal underground, is invited as the vocalist, and it becomes a duo. What follows is quite the dark tale, one that is still cloaked in conspiracy, mistrust, doubts, and terror. The Pierce Me Demo in 1998 received very little attention, and it was not until their 2001 album Pierce Me, the only thing released after said demo and would ever be released after, that Silencer became one of the most intriguing projects ever. Each track might start as you might expect a DSBM song or record to start. The chords are harmlessly sorrowful, but it is when the vocals kick in that one of the key points of the puzzle reveals itself. The vocals, not howled, not screamed, not shrieked, but painfully yelled out in agony, pure agony, compared to that of a dying animal, moments of pure madness, filtered through pure insanity piercing the mix, at times gargled and spoken through gritted teeth and watery inflections, at times it seems like Nothram is so down on his hands and knees in pain that he can't even muster up much of anything but these croaks from the bottom of his throat. And this is where it starts to get a little bit disturbing. Nathram is supposed to be clinically insane, and this is where rumors, facts, and fiction meet one another. Nathram was rumored to have cut off his own hands, replacing them with pig's feet, which is largely dispelled as just a conspiracy theory. But for context, to see just a glimpse into the grim imagery, as you can see, it was not pretty, it was not beautiful, it was just ominous and wrong. You feel a tingle crawl up your spine simply looking at it. And as opposed to simple gore and blood seen on many covers we become accustomed to as metalheads, something is off about it, and this is oftentimes how I feel about most imagery from not only Nathram, but Silencer as a whole. It just feels like something I shouldn't be looking at. Nathram allegedly self-harmed during the entire recording of Pierce Me, both during the recording vocal process and during downtime, refusing any medical attention and instead letting the pain fuel the process, going so far as to cut open his hands and cut his wrists down to the veins so that his body was covered in his own blood, and the recording area was as well. With the decrease in power volume, bouts of babbling in the vocals, and wholeheartedly screams of pain throughout, imagining this and painting that picture in your head of a man drenched in his own blood, slices going all across his hands and his wrists, all while he wails out about this, and being locked inside the mind of supreme and severe untreated mental illness is a lot to take in to say the least. I will proceed to play a few clips that exhibit this style. For anyone that knows this style, it will be instantly evident of how unsettling, uncommon, and unorthodox this approach is, and knowing the background validating those claims, it becomes even more disturbing. Beyond my 
find this leaf to be found. <laughs> Combine what you just heard with knowledge such as the lyrics being nearly exclusively relating to supreme pessimism, insanity, depression, and Natram becomes a very deranged figure. So much so that the sole reason the project split up is Natram was reported to have been institutionalized within an insane asylum. And you might think to yourself, this is where the story ends. No, later, Natram began a dark ambient project known as Diagnose Leben Gasfer, and I apologize for the butchering of that pronunciation. This furthers the eerie continuation of a glimpse into one of the darkest artists alive music, where he can be found with shaking, unsettling vocals, humming over droning background music, very minimalistic, cryptic, depressing lyrics, and even though it's so different in approach, it still somehow is linked to Silencer if not more so, as it gives an even more direct look to him with constant refrains such as throw my bones to the pigs and constant talk of death, it's the ramblings of a madman. If one thing is clear of Natram, it is that something was severely wrong with him, an untreated man with who knows what lurking in the darkest depths of his brain. I don't proclaim to know what he had or what any of this is or if any of it is true or what's true or what is false, but Knowing what I know, and hearing it, and going through this material, it's hard not to feel like something was wrong, something was different, something is just unsettling more than usual with this type of style. This is just a brief explanation of one of the darkest stories in black metal, in metal in general. Despite all of this, Silencer remains one of the most influential DSBM bands ever, inspiring countless other projects that would come later on, and yet, after all this time, no one has completely replicated the deranged nature of their sound, and in my eyes, I doubt anyone ever will. But as to the background and as to the details of the before and after of Natram and just what is wrong with him, I don't think we'll ever know.